Hi again, Rampage fans. Dan Weiss for SARampage.com. Hope you're enjoying your summer. Hope you're staying out of the heat. And we're broadcasting today inside the cool confines of the AT&T Center. About 10 weeks away from the start of the regular season, the 10th anniversary season for the San Antonio Rampage. And I'm pleased to be joined today by the man who will be behind the bench as the seventh head coach in San Antonio Rampage history, Chuck Weber. Chuck, welcome to San Antonio. Thanks. Excited to be here. Well, tell me, you know, I know that you were excited to get down here, and we'll start with a little bit of levity, but it seemed like the, I don't know if it was the hockey gods or maybe the, the airplane gods were really just doing whatever they could to prevent you from getting down to San Antonio yesterday. Yeah, travel was a little bit difficult getting down here. You know, got delayed for about five or six hours in Washington, and three airplanes they tried later to get us on. They finally found one that worked. So I guess at least they found one that worked to get us down here. And, uh, you know, it was, we got a little bit behind the eight ball a little bit in uh, getting around and seeing the area, but what we've seen so far has been fantastic. Well, tell the fans a little bit about yourself and, and a little bit about your coaching background and, and kind of where you're coming from here as you guys make the move down to San Antonio. Well, I was in Rochester last year with the Florida Panthers um, American League team. Uh, before that, uh, my head coaching experience, I was in Cincinnati with the Cyclones in the ECHL for four years. Uh, we won two championships in my, our four years down there. Uh, set a number of different records for a we had, uh, In 2008, we won 17 straight games uh, during the regular season. And, um, and then in 2010, my last year there, we, we were the number five seed and ended up winning the championship. Uh, two totally different types of teams, really skilled offensive team in 08. Uh, 2010, we were kind of a bunch of no-name grunts that uh, found a way. And then the year in between, we lost in the conference finals to the eventual champion, South Carolina. Um, and then before that, I kind of bounced around. I've joked around, this is my eighth city in 10 years uh, between the ECHL and markets like Augusta, Georgia for a couple of years, uh, Trenton, New Jersey, uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, and then at the American League level, I was in Milwaukee. Uh, and really, I think it was the first year here with San Antonio in 0203 uh, with the Admirals, with the Nashville Predators, and then in the old IHL uh, with the Orlando Solar Bears for a couple of years where I won my first championship in 2001 as an assistant coach. Um, so I've been fortunate enough to win three championships in my uh, 13 years of coaching. Um, so I've been fortunate and looking forward to putting you know, a successful product on the ice here in San Antonio. Quite a resume for a guy who's only 38 years old. Do you surprise yourself at times with that? Well, I, I, I joined coaching at a young age. You know, we joke around from the standpoint. I had limited hands and limited feet, but I always had the mind for it. So from the standpoint of, you know, I started coaching when I was 26 um, and kind of got into it young and, and really enjoyed the process so far. Um, so it's been a lot of fun, and, you know, and looking forward to, you know, as the, the, the journey goes here in my coaching career. This is a unique situation because while you are new to the Rampage and this team will be new to the Rampage, this is basically your team from last season in Rochester. And, and I got to believe that's going to make the transition not only easier for you, but, but easier for everybody, including the players that are coming to town here in a couple of months. Well, it is. We probably, we probably have about half our group from the team last year in Rochester. So we have a solid nucleus. Um, you know, Mike and Dale have done a great job of kind of filling in the holes, um, you know, getting in some solid veteran guys that weren't with us last year. Um, um, and really round, t putting this uh, roster, rounding it into shape. Um, last year, unfortunately, last summer with Dale getting the job right before the draft and then Mike Santos getting hired right at July 1st, you know, they kind of we were a little behind the eight ball with free agency and everything else. And, you know, the, we, we got a chance to talk and kind of revisit things after the season was over this year and kind of looked at the areas we needed to improve. And, you know, I thought they did a fantastic job of filling in some of those holes and, uh, you know, giving, giving us a great nucleus to start the season with. I know you were explaining to me yesterday that last season was one of the few seasons that your team failed to make the playoffs and I know as, as a competitive guys I know all coaches are very competitive something that eats at you what what did you think was uh, the biggest downfall the, the biggest I guess preventative measure that you know kept you guys from making the playoffs last season well, the biggest thing, kind of right out of the gate, um, like I said, we were a little thin as an organization last season. Um, unfortunately, Mark Cullen uh, tore his Achilles day one of training camp, who's supposed to be your number one center. Um, you know, the, there's a number of players that we thought were going to be coming to Rochester made the Florida Panthers. So it was great for them, but kind of hurt us a little bit. We probably lost, you know, forward-wise, potentially 80 or 90 goals out of our roster, um, you know, with those players that made Florida or got picked up on waivers by other teams. And uh, so that kind of got us. So we were kind of always chasing a little bit trying to find uh, pieces to the puzzle 
Um, and then we battled back. Um, we were six points out of the playoffs right before the NHL trade deadline. And, you know, we kind of knew Florida last year was going through that remodeling, you know, towards this year and rebuilding. And, um, you know, we were six points out going into Grand Rapids. And unfortunately, at the time, they made the, the number of trades at the deadline um, to increase, you know, for draft picks in the future, you know, for the Florida Panthers. And um, we ended up stumbling down the stretch. Uh, March and April, we had a lot of young guys in that, and, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, thin in the back from defensive wise. And, but it was good. A lot of the young kids learned. And, uh, you know, I think it was definitely something to use as building blocks going into this year. You have a, a young Swedish goalie by the name of Jacob Markstrom, who was a top draft pick by the Florida Panthers. He's considered the top prospect in their system right now. And you had him for his first full professional season last year in Rochester before a late season injury. From everything we've heard, and, and obviously it's kind of funny, Rochester being in the Western Conference, you'd think that the Rampage would have maybe gotten a sneak peek at this kid over the last couple of years. But it's one of the few teams that the Rampage just haven't seen over the last couple of seasons. But tell the fans a little bit about Jacob Markstrom and, and how high his ceiling is. Well, yeah, the sky's the limit for Jacob. You know, he, he's a talented kid. He's a big goalie. Uh, he takes up a lot of net, but at the same time, he's very athletic. Um, you know, he, he comes from an athletic background. Um, his brother and his dad were professional soccer goalies over in Europe. Um, and, and he's a competitive kid. The one thing I love about Jacob when I first met him, you know, you kind of find out what, what are their goals. You know, you get a lot of young kids, oh, I want to play in the NHL or I want to have a long NHL career. Um, I want to, you know, be successful that way. He, he told me his goal is to be considered the best goalie in the world. You know, that's, what, that's where his aspirations lie. And, uh, you know, you got to love the standpoint from that, 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 that where he sets the bar for himself. And uh, he was fantastic. Once he got comfortable, every, like every European player, they make that little adjustment to North America. He went through that in about Christmas time last year. He really took off. And it was unfortunate he got injured um, because, you know, that really that, that, that hurt us, you know, going down the stretch as well and not being able to have that two, two goalie tandem, especially with the number of three and threes in the American League. And, um, but the, the sky's the limit for him. He's going to be a future NHLer. And if he keeps progressing as is, the fans here in San Antonio are going to really enjoy watching him work. And with Florida going out and getting Jose Theodore in the offseason, it allows him to continue to develop in the American Hockey League and doesn't really force his hand to go and be the number one in the NHL right away. Exactly. You know, I think that's the mindset right now is for him to come down here, you know, and, and grab the ball and run with it. Um, but at the same time, it's a competitive business. If he goes in and has a lights out training camp, I, I don't think Florida can overlook that one bit. Um, but I, I think from the standpoint of they look at the big picture, and that's what I love about Florida is, you know, Mike and Dale have it set that the road to the Panthers is going to run through San Antonio. So over the next few years, the fans here are going to see a lot of good hockey players. You know, we just had our development camp a couple of weeks ago where I, I was fortunate enough with Brian Scrudlin to run most of the off on ice sessions and the, the talent that's you know on the horizon you know we got a great group of guys that are going to be in San Antonio this year and uh, I'm really looking forward to work with that but just even even in the big picture of the future it looks fantastic